Hello and welcome to Sierra Make. So if you've been following along with this channel, you'll know that I'm trying to make a costume every week until Halloween. So this week's costume is, it's gonna be a cosplay from the anime Cells at Work. It was popular, I think like two years ago, maybe one or two, three, don't know. It was popular a while ago and it's been on my to-do list for forever and I'm finally getting it done. So the character from Cells at Work that I picked was the white blood cell, and I realized as I was putting together the costume that I had more materials that actually matched the white blood cell from Cells at Work Code Black. So I think this cosplay is gonna actually turn out a little bit more like her than like him, but a lot of the things that I do in it can be used for both. So let's start off with taking a quick look at their outfits. You can see that they have a white shirt, white pants, some thigh straps. You can see that the male has a full harness and the female has just a leg strap and a belt. The female shirt is also longer with rolled up sleeves and more revealing. Her boots are shorter, she has long hair and black fingerless gloves. So now that we've identified all of those pieces, let's get started. To start off, I had this large white shirt. This is an everyday item. It's easily thriftable. I actually pulled this out of my neighbor's free pile. They were getting rid of a ton of clothing and I had already knew I wanted to do this character. So I grabbed it. I was like, this is perfect. I can make this character. The only thing is white blood cell actually wears more of a uniform. So it has two white front pockets that are different than this. So I'm just going to have to add those onto this shirt. I also need some white pants, so I got these from the thrift store. They were, I think, like less than $5. They're stretchy, and yeah, they do the job. I told you I'd been wanting to do this project for a while, so some other items that I already had were a pair of black fingerless gloves, some solid white shoes, a long white-haired wig. I actually bought this off Wish a really, really long time ago, and a white baseball cap which is what we're going to start with today. So I'm actually going to embroider white blood cell in Japanese onto this cap. Now I know most of you who are watching this probably don't have an embroidery machine. I don't expect you to. I'm doing an embroidery machine just because I think it'll look nicer, but you can just grab some black paint. If you have a vinyl cutter, you could use some black vinyl and cut it out or Honestly, you could probably just grab a Sharpie and write it on a white cap. It's just some words. It's one color. It's not super complicated, so I don't expect you to go to such lengths as I did. <laughs> By the way, I got this blank white cap in a set of six off of Amazon, and I really like how it fits on my head. Um, so I will link the Amazon link in the description. Moving on to the straps, aka the thigh straps and the belt on the female white blood cell. I have some white strap right here that I will be using for both of those. I also use some white velcro and a buckle. If I was making the full harness that's on the male, I probably would have just used buckles for everything. But since the thigh straps are just two straps that wrap around the leg, I figured velcro would be easiest. So right now I'm just cutting out two strips that are long enough to wrap around my thigh with some give in them. That way they'll fit multiple thighs in case someone else in my family wants to wear this costume. And I'm melting the ends of those because it's just plastic and I want to stop it from fraying later on. Now I'm just cutting out the length of Velcro I want. You can see I actually cut out a lot of Velcro and that's because honestly thighs come in tons of different sizes and mine are really big but my sisters are really small so I just you know you gotta you gotta give yourself some space a lot of wiggle room so now I'm just going to sew those onto the strips like this here's a close look at the stitch you can see it's just a straight stitch and boxed all the way around the edge of that velcro so moving on now that I have my two thigh straps, I'm going to make the belt. So I'm using that white buckle to make the belt. I know in the picture it looks more like just a regular belt loop with the belt pieces, but I don't have that. I have a white buckle, so we're doing a white buckle. This is going to be super easy as well. We're just going to sew one side down. We're going to use a box with an X in it to hold any tension that might be on the strap, and then we're just going to thread the other end of the buckle through that piece right there, and then voila, there is our belt. Super, super easy. 
Now that the hat and straps is done, let's move on to the shirt pockets. So I need to find a white fabric that matches the fabric of my shirt. This one is pretty close. You can see the thread count is a little different, but honestly, it doesn't matter. No one will notice. So I just measured the size of the pocket that's already there because I'm going to cover it with another pocket. And I'm going to add an extra two inches for the width of it so that I can do that little fold over thing that those uniform military uniform pockets have and I'm adding seam allowance around the edges as well and then I'm cutting out four rectangles which will be the flaps to the pockets so they're going to be double layered which is why I'm cutting out four and here's a little glance at what that will look like you see I've got the flaps doubled up and the pocket folded over so that you get that like wide strip in the front piece like that i don't know you know i guess it makes the pocket wider and you can put more stuff in it anyways let's sew three sides of those doubled up flaps together just like that i also cut off those corners and flipped it inside out then I just gave it a quick iron, and now I'm going to also iron in the top edge just so that raw edge gets hidden later. With both pocket flaps prepped and ready, it's time to move on to the actual pocket itself. So I'm going to be doing a lot of ironing here. I could put on some stabilizer if I wanted to, but it didn't really cross my mind until after I had already done one of them. So I'm going to iron in all of my raw edges so that they'd be on the inside and I'm also going to iron in that fold into the front of the pocket. Try and make sure that fold is even between either sides of the pocket so it's right in the center of it and also make sure that your pocket width ends up being the width that you wanted. So I wanted mine to be like about five inches I believe and so I'm just measuring here to make sure that that is where I want it to be. And we'll just iron that flat. And here's what our pocket looks like. So now we're just going to pin that on top of the other pocket, making sure that it covers it fully. And we are going to sew down and around, basically a U, a square U shape around the bottom pocket. And then just one line on the top part of the flap. There's our sewn pocket, looks pretty nice, nice and clean line. There's our stitch, there's the other stitch. You can kind of see the other pocket underneath, but you know what? Nobody's going to notice, nobody's going to see it except you, and now I have two pockets there. <laughs> now we can move on to sewing on the other pocket. It's going to be the same thing, we're just going to pin it in place. And there you go, this regular dress shirt kind of looks more like a uniform. So I did my hat, I did my straps, and I did the shirt pockets. That's pretty much all I needed to add to my already existing pieces, so let's put it all on and see how it turns out. Just a little tip for the makeup. Here I have a white body pencil from Spirit, and I'm just adding a few little marks onto my face and blending those into the foundation that I already have on. And this will give me more of a pale look, which is similar to white blood cells skin tone. I look sick. <laughs> also works for ghost makeup. Ah, uh, it's been a while since I've worn a wig. Also, I stuck my hair in braids and tucked them into my shirt. <laughs> it doesn't matter that it looks junky because... What? Suddenly... Hats hide everything. And here's the final look. What do you guys think? Do you like it? I've got the shirt that I altered, the belt and thigh straps I made, and the hat. I didn't have a katana, which she uses in the anime, but I did have an umbrella. So we'll be doing our pose with that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, some few things to note. I could have... Oh. Well, I could have tacked down the straps, or I could have just used some tape. I also could have made the straps a light gray so that they'd stand out a little bit more. And I also could have done any lines and trims also in a gray thread if I wanted it to pop and look a little bit more cartoony. The last alteration I could have done is put some snaps on the flaps of those front pockets because they stick up a little bit, but... Nah, it doesn't matter. Anyways, that is the end of this video, so be sure to hit the like button if you like this outfit. 
comment down below if there is a particular Halloween costume you want to see me try to make or something you want to see me do or something you're expecting me to do. How about that? Share this video with people who have seen cells at work and like the character, the white blood cell. Also, just your friends who like cosplay. And please subscribe because I post every Friday sometime after 3. <laughs> See you next week with a new costume, and thank you for watching! Ooh.